Hey, good morning, good afternoon, Whole30 Day 9. We're here with YouTube Live. As always, I'm Melissa Urban, your host for the day, and we're going to be going through Whole30 Day by Day, Day 9, talking about, I mean, everything. We talk about everything in these lives. It has become quickly the favorite hour of my day because I get to see all of you and connect with you, chat with you, hear about your Whole30 experience answer questions that you have, talk about the whole 30s history and philosophy and how we've changed and evolved and offer you advice and connect with people. So makes me really happy. Hey, Kate, welcome back. Good to see you from Texas. We've got whole 30 HQ here in the chat. Super happy to have your assist. Thanks so much for joining us. Brenda's saying hi from Wichita. I don't know why I want to treat this like a, like a telethon where I'm like, Brenda's calling in from Wichita. Hey, Brenda. I'm going to just adjust my volume here real quick as we let people come in. Nope, that's going to mute me. I don't want to do that. Okay, I think we're good here. Perfect. Happy Tuesday. Hi, Kathleen. Good to see you again. Hi, Abby. Welcome back. Happy Tuesday. Feeling great on days eight and nine. Tons of energy in the morning. Ready to go to bed early at night. That sounds like my perfect day, frankly. That is my perfect day. I wake up no alarm, 6 a.m., within like maybe 20 minutes on either side of 6 a.m., ready and raring to go. I hop out of bed annoyingly cheerful. And by eight o'clock at night, I just want to get into my bed with my book and chill and relax and go to bed nice and early. So honestly, it sounds like you're living my best life. And I'm very happy for you. And I think that that's wonderful. Waking up with more energy is a huge non-scale victory. And I love to hear it. Lisa took a walk today huge, amazing, wonderful. You felt energetic and motivated and excited enough to put on your gear and go outside and go for a walk and be outside and move your body. And I think that's amazing. Walking is the most underrated form of exercise. Walking is exercise. And I absolutely, I don't know what my mental health would have been doing between 2020 and now if I hadn't walked on a regular basis. So I think that's wonderful and a great NSV and we love to see it. Thank you so much for sharing. Hey, Patricia, it's my favorite too. I'm so glad that you're here. Thanks so much for joining us. Yep, Whole30 is reminding you to please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It would be wonderful. Oh, look at my subscribe button just floating way up there for reasons I don't know. There it is. Go ahead and subscribe. And as you're watching, if you hear something that you love, or even just like right now, because we're just getting into it, click that little thumbs up button. My husband, who is a YouTube expert, tells me that likes go a really long way towards helping other people doing the Whole30 find these videos. So give us a little like, give us a subscribe. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Hey, Rachel, good to see you. We've got Michelle from the Bay Area, Long Island. We see Stephanie Kelly from Denver. Hello. Oh, we've got two Denver people right in a row. Bernadette, good to see you. Let's see what Darlene has to say about the Whole30. You are doing amazing. Multiple autoimmune disorders and connective. Oh, that makes me so happy, Darlene. I love hearing that. You know, we've often talked about Whole30 NSVs. You know, you're sleeping better. Your energy is better. You have fewer cravings. You have less joint pain and swelling. And when we talk about them, we talk about them as they're these discreet, you know, little benefits that just exist in a, in a kind of isolation. My energy is better. But when you think about it, if your energy is better and you're feeling less pain and your digestion is smoother and you have all of these things, those spill over into every single area of your life. Those NSVs, there's no area that those NSVs don't positively impact. So it's so much more than just, I checked off the energy box. It's what is more energy bring you for the rest of your day, your work, your family, your friendships, your relationships, your self-care, your self-confidence, your fitness, whatever. What is What does that energy bring you? And I think that's the spillover effect of Whole30 that makes me so excited to coach and lead people through the program every single time, every single day, every single time. So I love that. Let's see. Kathleen is saying that your depression symptoms are better. I love hearing that. I'm so happy to hear it. In my Substack. Uh, community today, my membership community, I'm talking about how despite on paper, my life is incredibly stressful right now. I've got some work stress. I definitely have gone through some personal stress. I had a friendship breakup that was just really devastating. 
there's a lot going on for me right now. And because of this season, I should be wanting to hide under a grill cover. This is usually when seasonal depression rears its head and it's at its strongest, not to mention post-concussion symptoms. And my mental health is amazing right now. And I'm writing about that and exploring some of the things I've been doing that I think are helping on my sub stack, but certainly doing a Whole30 program, not just because of the change of the food that you put on your plate, but because of your sense of self-confidence, because your sense of connection, how you know, you're know you so closely connected to this community and you are um, showing up here every single day for yourself and connecting with other people and being social, all of that can have an impact, a positive impact on your mental health. And while we would never say that dietary changes or lifestyle factors alone can guaranteed fix anybody's depression. I will be the first one to say, as I wrote this morning, that like you can't outwork depression because if you could, we all would be able to. I still think it's wonderful if you happen to notice that some of the lifestyle or dietary changes you're making are having a positive impact. That can feel incredibly affirming. So I'm really hard to hear it. I'm really glad to hear it. And I think that's wonderful to hear. Serenity is saying a bad cold over the weekend. Oh good, I hope that you are kicking it. Colds can be, oh, I, you know, I think we all know that COVID is not the only thing out there. There's colds, there's flus, there's RSVs going around. So I hope that you do feel better. And I do hope that your Whole30 helps you heal faster. I think that's wonderful. Go ahead and stock up on the fond bone broth and make sure you're drinking plenty of that because that's so good for you when you're sick. Patricia's talking about walking. Yeah, walking is just you know, whether I go out with my dog, sometimes I don't take my dog out. Sometimes I just go for a walk by myself. That's okay too. Henry gets plenty of exercise and he's at doggy daycare today playing with all of his other dog friends. So that's why he's not going to be busting into my office like a wrecking ball today. Um, I'm sorry that you're not going to get the chance to see him, but yes, I also love walking outside. I think walking is so underrated and it has such tremendous benefits. So I love it. Good morning from San Diego. No naps needed. Good energy. Yeah, we love to see it. This is like around the point where some people start to turn the corner. Whole 30 day nine, you start to feel better. You start to realize that your energy is better. It starts to feel easier. You're starting to kind of see some light at the end of the tunnel if you were headachy or cranky or tired. So I love hearing that. I think that's great. And that's a very common experience. We're still in like mixed bag territory. It's not all sunshine and rainbows at this point in your whole 30. But I do like to see people that are turning a corner. Michelle is saying you were able to work out this morning, light workout. Love that. Waking up with a little bit more energy, feeling like you slept well, waking up and thinking, okay, I wake up, I feel good. I don't have a headache. I don't feel groggy. I don't feel tired can definitely naturally make you say, what else can I do? What could I, what else could I do? Could I go for a walk this morning? Could I journal a little bit? Could I tidy a little bit? Could I do a little bit of a workout? Awesome. Wonderful. If that extra energy organically spills over into wanting to do something else that makes you feel good, take advantage of it. Another Whole30 spillover benefit. Okay. The NSV list is cranking this morning and I am here for it. Unexpectedly late dinner, due to some things coming up, but you weren't hungry. Yeah. I think that's wonderful. One of the things that I quickly realized in my first Whole30, I was one of those people where I felt like I had to eat every two hours. Every two hours I had to eat. And I felt like if I didn't, I would get super duper hangry. And I always thought that it was because my metabolism was so high, but it wasn't. It was because I was really used to running on sugar for fuel and I wasn't very fat adapted. And after my first Whole30 and I continued with those habits, I was able, if I missed a meal, if I had travel delays, if I ended up with like a long you know, a meeting that ran long at work and I couldn't eat for three or four hours, I was hungry. But like appropriately, biologically so, I was not cranky. I didn't lose focus. I didn't get hangry. And that has really come in so handy as like a basic life skill <laughs> I can go hours without eating if I have to. I tend, I generally don't choose to. I'm not like a fasting kind of person, but I can go hours if I need to. If we get stuck at my son's rock climbing competition for hours and I already ate my snack and I'm like, okay, it's going to be a while, I'm fine. My energy is good. My motivation is good. My focus is good. Huge non-scale victory. I absolutely love hearing that. Rachel's talking about improved mood and energy. That is fantastic. You're the greatest version of yourself on the Whole30. I want to like crochet that on like a little pillow. 
or something like that. The greatest version of myself. Because the the best part about that, Rachel, is that you are doing this for yourself. You are conscientiously and deliberately making choices that you know are in your highest good, that make you feel the best, that feel like they are serving you. You're not depriving yourself. You're not punishing yourself. You're not restricting yourself from things that you know would, you know, really make you feel better, but you're not gonna because you're living by some set of rules. You are making deliberate choices that you know make you feel your best physically, psychologically, emotionally, from a self-confidence perspective. And yes, there are a lot of tips for making these habits stick when your Whole30 is over. And we're going to talk about that a lot more towards the end of the program. We're going to spend a lot of time, even going into February, talking about food freedom. Because what happens when your Whole30 is over, when you have eliminated, when you have reintroduced, then you get to take what you've learned and turn it into a long-term, sustainable diet that works best for you according to your definition of health, your goals, the foods that you consider worth it or so delicious or so culturally significant or family significant that you don't want to be without them. And the goal of food freedom, not to get too far ahead of myself, but I think it's really important to keep this in mind. The entire point of the Whole30 is to get you to food freedom where you don't need to eat by anyone else's rules. You have a blueprint for the foods that work best for you And you apply that blueprint such that your regular diet, your everyday diet, the things you're eating feel delicious, rewarding, satisfying, that you feel like you have treats and family favorites and things that are like not, maybe they're not making you healthier. Maybe you know that when you eat this food, you're going to break out or your digestion is going to go a little wonky for a day or two, but it's so darn delicious that it's worth it. You are going to incorporate those foods in a way that makes your diet as broad and robust and joyful as possible and keeps you feeling and living your best. You are going to find that sliding line where you have the most joy and feel the best and you don't have to make trade-offs. That's what we're going to do with our food freedom. And like, doesn't that sound amazing? If you can get there, post Whole30 and you work your food freedom plan, as I can help you do, and as the book Food Freedom Forever can help you do, and we're going to have a ton of resources for you, that's how you maintain how you feel this good. And I think we can talk about things like trade-offs. We can talk about things like, is it worth it? Like, we'll get there. But all of that to say, don't worry, we have a very good plan for you. It's very well outlined, and we will spend a lot of time talking about it. So we got you. That's a great question though. And I'm so glad that you are feeling your best. That makes me very, very happy. Emily had an NSV last night. Good to see you back, Emily. Thanks for coming back. Stayed totally compatible, brought two slices of cake, put them in the freezer. Oh, what a good idea. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You don't want to miss the cake because if your pastor's wife is a pastry chef, you don't want to miss out on that. But yeah, put it in the freezer, defrost that for reintro. Like that's just the best of both worlds. I absolutely love that plan. Wonderful. Now you don't get to miss out on it and you get to keep your Whole30 promise. Absolutely genius. I hope the cake had a lot of frosting because that's my jam. I only eat cake that has a lot of frosting and like the sugary stuff, not the like whipped stuff. We don't need to talk about frosting anymore right now. I forget. I digress, but I hope it's wonderful when you pull it out for reintro. I think that is absolutely fantastic. Darlene is saying reintro is always where you lose focus. I get it. Reintro is challenging. We're going to spend a lot of time here talking about reintroduction towards the back third of our Whole30 journey, maybe even like the back quarter. We're going to save it till an appropriate time, but we will cover this for you in great detail. I promise this is not going to be the year that you lose focus. This is not the year. No, none of you. Uh Uh-uh. It's not happening. Abby's getting up earlier in the morning easier, not feeling groggy. I absolutely love that. I think that's fantastic. Brianna is also saying energy is better. Huge energy burst in the evening. Oh, that's interesting. Typically, I'm curious as to whether or not you feel as though your energy burst in the evening is interfering with your sleep. Are you feeling that tired but wired, which indicates that cortisol levels are inappropriately high in the evening? If you I'm kind of going to ask you a few questions here and then you can sort of think about this, but number one, 
would you say that your eating is happening mostly during daylight hours? So you are waking, you are eating breakfast within an hour of eating, and then within an hour or two at least before you go to bed, are you done eating? That's a really good way to make sure that your hormonal patterns are in balance. You can kind of force things back towards balance by thinking about your timing of your eating. So ideally, biologically, appropriately, we're eating when it's light out, which means not delaying breakfast. If you delay breakfast too long, that tends to you being incredibly hungry very late in the evening. And if you eat too soon before bed, it's going to disrupt your sleep. I'm curious if you're waking up feeling energetic, or if you're waking up real hard, feeling super groggy, which could indicate that cortisol isn't rising to an appropriate level or at an appropriate time. So I wonder if your entire cortisol patterns could be potentially shifted. If you get a burst of energy in the evening, contextualize that. Is it so much energy that you feel like you can't fall asleep even though you're tired? So your brain is racing, you're going, it's like not a good feeling at all and you're struggling to go to sleep at night, or is are you like me where after dinner, I need to spend about 30 minutes or so moving. I can't after dinner just sit down. This is my what we call in my house my putter time. I do not want anybody's help. I do not want assistance. In fact, please get out of my kitchen. I am gonna make my kids lunch. I'm gonna pack his snacks. I'm gonna clean the counter. I'm gonna do all the dishes. I'm gonna do my meal prep for the next day. I'm gonna make sure that we have like food defrosted, meat defrosted, Henry's food defrosted, whatever. This is my putter time because after dinner, I do get this like energy burst, but it feels appropriate. It feels like I just ate a meal and now I kind of wanna move around a little, aid in my digestion. And then when that's done, I'm able to very comfortably relax and we watch a little bit of Netflix or I go, you know, to my room and I'll read a book. So contextualize this for me. Um, That can help me figure out whether this burst of energy is like cool and normal and you're just sort of getting this like post meal or whether it's problematic and you want to start thinking about, okay, obviously my cortisol patterns, my hormonal patterns are shifting as a result of the Whole30, which absolutely can happen and it can take a while and incremental shifts before you feel like I'm waking in the morning at an appropriate time with appropriate energy and I'm winding down before bed at an appropriate time with appropriate energy. It could just take another week or two, but think about how can I also help aid this process? Can I adjust my eating window such that I'm eating within an hour of waking and stopping eating before dinner? Can I adjust my light exposure such that when I wake up in the morning, I am getting bright sunlight in my face. Maybe it means I go for a 15 minute walk outside with no sunglasses on. Even if it's like winter and it's not super bright out, can you get light first thing in the morning? And can you dim your lights in the evening? Can you get off screens in the hour before bed? Can you, if you do need a screen, can you use like a blue light blocker or blue light glasses? But think about adjusting things like food, things like lighting, things like your morning routine, your bedtime routine to help you accommodate what would be a more normal or natural energetic pattern where you're waking up with energy and then that cortisol level is slowly going down appropriately until you feel tired enough to go to bed. So lots of potential questions for you to think about there, but hopefully that helps you a bit. Let me scroll down to some comments. Um, Let's see. I love people are agreeing best, best version of myself. That's Brianna again. I love that. Hi, Michelle from Cape Cod. You are, oh, your joint pain and stiffness is significantly improved. Love to hear it. Fantastic. There are obviously some foods that you were eating that were interfering with your joint mobility and your body's immune system. And hopefully when we get around to reintroduction, you will do a fantastic job of reintroducing slowly and carefully and systematically. And you will use that time to help you identify any potential triggers so that you will know that Eating gluten is like not a big deal, but when you eat dairy, oh boy, that joint pain and stiffness comes back and then that will allow you to make conscientious, deliberate decisions in your food freedom to help you maintain that joint health in a way that still allows you to enjoy the foods and drinks that you want to enjoy, whatever that looks like for you. So I love seeing that. And when reintroduction comes around, it's going to be very important for you in particular. Patricia is saying you have been cold and couldn't warm up. Yeah, you know, that might be one of those things that is Whole30 related, but it also like very much not be. It could just be that, I don't know, maybe 
activities. Maybe you're spending more time outside. Maybe it's colder outside. Maybe your house is a little bit chillier or you're losing a little bit of heat through insulation. Um, I'm glad you turned the corner. I always, I feel like spend part, most of my day feeling like just a little bit chilly, but that's because we do, you know, we keep our house like very, very, our house is at 65 right now. It's like between 63 and 66 during the day. And I always walk around a little bit chilly, but I'm comfortable with that. And I think it does help me with feeling not cold all the time, no matter where I go. So I don't know if that's like a whole 30 thing or not, but I'm glad that it wasn't too unpleasant. And I'm glad that you've changed the corner or turned the corner. I like that. Um, let's see. Okay, Laura. Yeah. Feel, you feel like you couldn't eat enough. So this is again, a very common experience on the whole 30. There could be a couple things at play. First of all, the first thing I'll say is if you are legitimately hungry, eat something. That's what we do on the whole 30. If you're hungry, go ahead and eat. We don't need to wait. We don't need to like ration. We're not portion controlling. We're certainly not counting calories or macros. If you're hungry, go ahead and eat because everything you're putting in your mouth is whole 30 compatible. So go ahead and eat. That's like the biggest piece of advice. It can be common to feel hungry all the time for a few reasons. First, it's possible that you just haven't quite figured out how big to make your meals to tide you over from one to the next. We're playing around with protein. We're playing around with fat. We're playing around with you know vegetables, whether they're carb-dense vegetables or nutrient-dense vegetables that have a lot of fiber and a lot of water and a lot of bulk, but not a lot of calories. So maybe it looks like our plate is super duper full, but there isn't a lot of calories on the plate. And so we end up hungrier later than we thought we would. So that can be a piece of it is figuring out how big to make your meals. I wouldn't expect anyone to have a 100% handle on that yet, or it would be normal if you didn't. The other piece of it is there might be psychological factors at play where your brain is translating cravings into hunger and that's okay. Maybe it's related to the time of day. Maybe it's related to an emotional state. Maybe it's about the, you know, conversation or the person you were just with, or every time you walk by the break room at, you know, at work, you get a little like hunger pain because that's the association that you have. That can also be really common. The last thing that can happen is that sometimes people just aren't eating enough on the Whole30 yet. And this is very common if you are focusing really heavily on low carb vegetables. So if you're doing a lot of broccoli, cauliflower, spinach, peppers, onions, mushrooms, delicious, wonderful nutrient dense vegetables, but not particularly calorie dense. So if your plate is really full of those and maybe you're going a little lighter on the protein or maybe you're even doing like a, you know, a reasonable protein for your activity level and size. And then if you're coming into the program a little bit fat, a little bit afraid of added fat, dietary fat, because we've all been conditioned that dietary fat is bad. Maybe you're a little light on fat and it could be just that you're not eating enough. So I would say, Laura, just pay attention. You know, maybe yesterday was just one of those tough days for you and you felt like you had hunger all day long and then you just ate food and you were fine. And maybe today you notice that your hunger is far more in balance or you're making your meals a little bigger and like that doesn't happen again. If you notice it's happening relatively consistently, that you were just always hungry all the time, take a look at some of the components of your meals and ask yourself, could I add a little more fat? That is very satiating. Am I making sure that I'm doing enough protein? Am I doing one to two palm sized servings? Could I bump that to like, if I'm doing one, could I do one and a half or could I add extra protein, you know, in the form of maybe a two Applegate, no sugar chicken sausage to my breakfast, plus my two eggs. Um, am I doing carb dense vegetables? So if I'm active, especially if you're active, if you run, if you CrossFit, if you go to the gym, if you do hot yoga classes, if you teach classes, what have you, you may need to purposefully add fruit and carb dense vegetables to those meals and those plates full of the nutrient dense, but calorie light veggies may not be enough for you. So look at a few of those factors. But again, the biggest thing is we are not worried about how much you're eating on the Whole30 or whether you're eating too much. You are eating real whole nutrient-dense food. It would be very hard to over-consume nutrient-dense food. We're talking steak. We're talking chicken. We're talking healthy fats like avocado and olive oil and coconut oil and real whole vegetables, sweet potato and butternut squash and broccoli and cauliflower it's not the same as consuming super normally stimulating nutrient poor calorie dense foods where you can eat a whole lot of them and still feel like you're not full. 
this is not that because we're eating real whole food. I'm not worried at all about how much you're eating or whether you're eating too much. And I really don't want you to worry about that either. On the whole 30 year rule of thumb is if you are hungry, you should eat. That's it. That's as simple as I can make it. So hopefully that helps. We have a lot of questions. So let me, I see that, um, Lisa and Shannon, uh, Shannon already answered this in the chat, but we're talking about feeling bloated. So yes, one of the, this comes up actually quite a bit. And I think it does tend to come up on day eight to nine in our whole 30 timeline. I think it says like, why are my pants tighter? Like, why am I feeling as though I'm getting more bloated and it's pushing against my waistband? This can happen for a variety of reasons. It may just be a natural sort of adjustment to the foods that you're eating, but where we see it happen the most, as we mentioned in the chat, is if you are doing lots of raw veggies versus cooked veggies. So big salads, big green salads, snacking on raw veggies. If you are doing a lot of higher FODMAP veggies, vegetables that are higher in FODMAPs, which are fermentable carbohydrates that in some digestive tracts can ferment in your gut and lead to gas and bloating. So if you're doing a lot of higher FODMAP veggies, and we do have a list on our website, but it would be the cauliflower and the onions and the garlic and the eggplant. And I think on some lists, maybe avocado, that can be contributing to bloating. As Shannon also said in the chat, eating a lot of nuts and seeds may cause this. So if you're really doing a lot of nuts and seeds because those are a really easy and delicious fat source, that might cause bloating. And again, eating a lot more. We talked about this yesterday. If you're eating a lot more of any one food in particular, that is a Whole30 compatible food, but you weren't eating a lot of pre-Whole30. Maybe it's eggs. I noticed that I don't tolerate eggs super well if I do too many of them. So if you were eating eggs once in a while for breakfast, and now on your Whole30, you've been eating eggs every single morning, that could be contributing as well. So there are a few resources on our website. You can look at our low FODMAP shopping list. There's a podcast on my website, melissau.com with Dr. Michael Ruscio that talks about what changes you might want to make if you find on your Whole30, your digestion is not improving the way that you want it to. And then by the end of your Whole30, if you're still experiencing this, then it might be time to kind of peek under the hood with a functional medicine doctor, get some gut testing or some stool testing. But this can be a very normal experience. And usually it's the result of you eating a whole lot of raw vegetables or vegetables that you weren't eating a lot of before, or maybe eating too much fruit in one sitting because certain fruits are higher in FODMAPs as well, too, meaning too much for your digestive tract to effectively absorb. So take a look at that low FODMAP shopping list. And maybe what you do is you only eat low FODMAP fruits and veggies for a day or two and see if that helps. That can give you insight. There's still a lot of fruits and vegetables to choose from, even on that low FODMAP list. Let me scroll down to the rest of the chat. There's so much stuff. I'm so glad. Thank you so much, Shannon, for filling in all of those links for us. Abby is saying you had to increase your carb-heavy vegetables. Yeah, I think that's, I think we've all been conditioned. There was a while, a couple, like a two-year period probably, where everyone was keto and everyone was like, nobody needs any carbs for any reason ever. I mean, that locks a lot of nuance and a lot of context. And some people run better on higher carb than higher fat. I am one of those people. I know that when hiking season rolls around, I have to purposefully and deliberately dramatically increase my carbohydrate intake because when I hike fueled by a lot of carbohydrates, I feel much better than when I hike on a low carbohydrate, higher fat diet. I've played around with this a ton myself. So some people do run more effectively on carbohydrate and your context matters. There are some sports that rely on primarily carbohydrate for energy, high intensity activities like CrossFit, soccer, basketball, and the statement that like nobody needs carbohydrate because your body can utilize other fuel sources is true, but it doesn't take into account is that the optimal way to perform. And you don't have to be a pro athlete to want to feel good at your recreational activity of choice. So one of the things I'll say, and I'll remind people of this, like next week, I tend to see around day 12, 13, 14, people will come to me and they'll say, I had great energy for the first like week or 10 days. And now I feel like my energy has plummeted. 
And like nine times out of 10, I tell them eat more carbohydrate. I guarantee that what happened was you weren't eating enough carbohydrate to, sub to support your activity levels in an optimal way for your body. And you can get away with that for a little while, but then it starts to catch up with you. And it's a super easy fix. Purposefully add potatoes, butternut squash, beets, fruit to every single meal, just like a portion or two. You don't have to go overboard. I'm not saying make you know, your entire meal like three sweet potatoes, but just add some. Make sure you've got some carbohydrates in there. And if you feel better, you'll immediately know that that was the issue. And nine times out of 10, that is the issue. So I think that's great, Abby, that you're playing around with it. Use your energy levels, your performance in the gym, your recovery, you know, your sleep at night. Those things can all be indicative of helping you make sure that you're eating enough and that you're eating enough specifically for your activity level and the context in that activity. So I think that's wonderful. Stephanie is saying that your digestion is amazing and you're feeling regular. I love that. Huge, I mean, again, huge NSV. That's a sign that like your body and digestion are working really, really well. You no longer have to be uncomfortable because constipation is so uncomfortable. I think that's great. And your body is clearly enjoying this. So I think that is wonderful. I'm really good to hear it. I'm really glad to hear it. I'm mixing up my words a lot, which is definitely indicative of concussion symptoms. Um, rearing their head just a tad with lights in my face and like these kinds of conversations, it definitely can tax my brain a little, but I have to say I'm doing remarkably well. Like we are talking, I'm operating at like 95%, which considering how bad my concussion symptoms have been off and on for the last four years are remarkable. Maybe I should put my little blue light glasses on because those do help a lot. So let's do that. Or maybe I should have had them on all along. Jessica is saying at the doctor's this morning, I asked not to know my weight. I like that, Jessica. I think that's wonderful. You know, your doctor may, there may be a legitimate medical reason to take your weight. There are reasons, whether it's dosing for medication or I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but I'm sure I have heard doctors say that there are some legitimate reasons to take your weight. And also you don't need to know that. It's not important to you. And I think it's great to be like, go ahead and take it. And I don't want to know. Don't tell me. I'll face backwards. I'll turn around. It's not important to me. And I think that's fantastic. That is a wonderful NSV. And I'm really glad you stood up for yourself in that situation. It can be hard, I think, to stick up for ourselves in a doctor's office. So I think that's fantastic. And I'm really happy for you. I like that. Let me go down to a whole bunch. Probiotics. Laura, probiotics are definitely part of the conversation in terms of digestive health and in terms of anytime people say, like, are there any general supplement recommendations on the Whole30? There aren't a lot of general supplement recommendations. And of course, your best bet for, recommend, for supplementing is to speak with your healthcare provider, run some labs or do some testing on your body, and then determine the supplements that are right for you based on that very specific feedback. That would be ideal. So I would never recommend that any one person in particular take any one supplement. But if people were to say, what are the supplements that are the most generally beneficial? Probiotics would be one of them. And Dr. Michael Ruscio and I covered this in detail in my podcast episode because the world of probiotics can be very confusing. There's a lot of different strains and how do you know which strain you need and how do you know how much to take and how do you know if they're working? We covered that in my podcast episode. And there's also a link to the probiotics from his office that I use and I've been using for a few years now. I think his, he wrote the book, Healthy Gut, Healthy You. He's incredibly well-researched. He works with patients and have for, has for many years. He's very experienced in the world of gut health. And his probiotic line, I find the most balanced and incredibly effective. So that's the one that I recommend um, to people. He's also been a very good friend of mine in Whole30s for many years, but he is Dr. Michael Ruscio. Jessica is saying that you've also been bloated, which doesn't feel great, but you're doing the right thing to combat it. Yes. I like hearing that, Jessica. And again, if you do notice that you're bloated, look into low FODMAP vegetables and fruits. Eat more cooked vegetables than raw for a few days. If there's any one food that you are eating way more now than you were pre-Whole30, maybe take a look at that and scale that back or give that food up for a day or two and see if that helps. Um, Matthew's just getting here from some very restful sleep. So I'm glad to hear that. Welcome back, Matthew. Uh, glad that you're sleeping better. That is a very common non-scale victory. Let's talk about my hydration for today. The luxury hydration method is to have two things going at once, but I have one 
but like I've got two. So what I have here is my mud water and some unsweetened nut pods. I have the vanilla flavor, but I've also added a half a pack of Element Electrolytes raw flavor. I talked about these in my stories today. I am a huge Element Electrolytes fan. I've been taking these for, gosh, since 2018 now, God, four years, I suppose, since they first came out. I think I was taking them before they even launched because I've known the founders for quite some time. They are a wonderful blend of electrolytes, mostly sodium based and can be so incredibly helpful for energy levels, muscle cramp, replenishing electrolytes when you are active. In the winter, it's actually even more important to be aware of your electrolyte balance than it is in the summer because in the winter, when we're in cold temperatures, the sweat evaporates off our skin basically instantaneously. So we don't have the same cue that we have in the summer where it's like, oh, I'm really sweaty. I better drink some water and maybe I want to replenish electrolytes, the most important of which to replenish is sodium. In winter, we don't have those same cues. So we can be really active. We're hiking, snowshoeing, skiing, rucking, playing sport. We're sweating, but it's evaporating quickly. We don't notice that we're getting really, really hot. Electrolytes can be incredibly important to replenish and you can use the raw unflavored element on your Whole30. So I add half of it to my mud water. It's pretty amazing what a little bit of salt can do for sort of the bitter earthy notes of a mud water or coffee alternative. You can also do half a pack in your 24 ounce water bottle with some fresh squeezed lemon or lime. You can do um, half a pack of element in your, like if you do a spa water, you know, it's cucumber, it's rosemary, it's fruit infused, just add a half a pack. And I think we have some really good recipes too, using the raw unflavored element on the Whole30 website and Instagram feed as well. But they're running a special right now where you can order any pack of element electrolytes, any box, single flavor box, and they will send you a free sample pack. So you'll get a sample with all eight of their flavors, one raw, which is Whole30 compatible, and then seven other flavors that are lightly sweetened just to take the edge off with a little stevia, which makes them perfect for your food freedom. But if you order a box now, you can find the link in my stories. You can stock up on your raw. You can get your electrolyte supplementation throughout your the rest of your Whole30, and then you will have your flavors to test out during reintroduction for free. So I am drinking my mud water with Element Electrolytes today. That's why I've got my little two-for-one beverage. Um, I think someone's asking what mud water is. Yeah, it is a coffee alternative. Mud water is a cacao and um, chai-based coffee alternative that includes a variety of functional mushrooms, most significantly lion's mane. It is Whole30 approved. It has a very kind of earthy, not bitter, but it's it's very earthy. That's how I describe it. Um, I think that it does taste take a little getting used to in terms of the flavor. I love it with a little bit of nut pods. I love it with a little bit of element. And the benefit is that it provides, because it only has about 17 grams of caffeine per serving, where a normal cup of coffee has about 100. So it's very low in caffeine. But because it uses functional mushrooms like lion's mane, I find it gives me the energy and the focus and the productivity of coffee without any of the jitters because I can't drink caffeine. I'm a terrible metabolizer of caffeine and any, even a normal amount, a normal cup of coffee would make me feel absolutely horrible for the entire day. So motor water gives me a lot of the same benefits without any of the drawbacks. So thanks for letting me chat about that. Okay. Let's talk about whole 30 day nine. If you have your whole 30 day by day journal, we are opening up to page 68 and day nine. One of the things I talk about a little bit on day nine is whether it feels like the whole 30 and food in general is taking up a lot of real estate in your brain. And I think it's very common in the beginning, especially if you are new or newer to the whole 30 to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm thinking about food a lot. I'm reading all my labels. I'm thinking about what's for breakfast. I'm thinking about what's for lunch. I'm doing meal planning. I'm thinking about emergency food. It can feel like, wow, there's food on my brain all the time. I don't know if you've noticed that or not, but if you have, give me like a little thumbs up or a heck yes in the chat. What I will say is that it gets easier so fast. Anytime you take on a new habit or you learn a new skill, you will be intensely preoccupied with the 
minute details of what that skill entails. I will give you an example. When I first set up these YouTube lives, I'm going to give you a tour of my like studio in here. There are, there's so much equipment. You are not seeing any of the equipment, but I've got a thing here and here, and I've got microphones and I've got lights and I've got a camera connected to this, connected to my laptop and another big light. The first live I spent 80% of my mental energy going, okay, do I have this cable connected right? Is this light on right? Is the camera in focus? Is this software working? Because this is brand new software. And then talking to you, I only had like 25% of my brain power to do, right? Because I was so focused on are all of these technical things right? Today, I sauntered into this studio five minutes before we started. Camera goes on, this goes on, microphone gets set up, light turns on, lights go here, ecam gets turned on, do this, edit this. I spent 3% of my brain power on the setup. And that means I get to spend 90%, 97% of my brain power here just talking to you, hanging out, enjoying myself. It's so much more fun. So with your Whole30, it can feel in the beginning like I'm reading every label, I'm planning all my meals. You don't have a routine down yet. You don't know what mustard you like the best. You don't know which pasta sauce is compatible because you haven't made pasta yet. You don't have a set of five or six whole 30 meals on rotation that you know you can go to and just make without even having to think about. You don't have that yet because we're only on day nine. And if you're new to the whole 30, that just hasn't been established. But I will say it gets easier so fast. And what I would love to hear is at what point in your whole 30, this gets easier for you. So as we show up on these lives, I want you to come into the chat one morning and go, today was the day I turned the corner. I woke up this morning and I thought, oh yeah, I don't really have to think about X, Y, and Z anymore at all. I'm just going to do what I do. And now my brain power is kind of freed up to think about what are my non-scale victories? What else could I do? How could I expand my Whole30 journey? How could I connect with more people on the Whole30? How could I learn more about where my food comes from? Could I try a new recipe? Could I go for a walk? Like at what point in your journey do you feel like your Whole30 habits are now mostly on some sort of pilot, autopilot, right? Maybe not entirely. They probably aren't ever entirely. There's always some aspect of me that is thinking about and evaluating my setup in the studio. I'm always looking at my microphone levels. Are they too high? But it's mostly on autopilot, which allows me to enjoy the process so much more. And I'm thinking that this is what is going to happen to you on your Whole30 as well. And if you're not there yet, that is okay. I would highly suspect that by the end of the second week, you will all say, yeah, this is starting to feel easier. And on the third week, what I have people coming to me saying is, I don't even know what day it is. Oh my gosh, am I on day 22? I guess. I, yeah, I guess it's day 22. That's when I know we've made it. You've made it when you're like, I don't even know what day I'm on. I'm just doing it. I feel great. It's just something I'm doing now. It's like part of who I am at least this month, and I'm just doing the Whole30. So that's what we're talking about in Whole30 day by day by today. And that is the encouragement I want to give you is if it still feels like you're expending a lot of brain power specific to your Whole30 journey, the label reading and all that stuff, totally normal and it will get easier. And I want you to look for the moments where it's starting to get easier. So I like hearing that. Yes, a lot of thumbs up here. I think that's fantastic. And the sound quality is good. Oh my gosh, better than the first. That first YouTube live I did, the like getting ready for the whole 30, I had internet problems, I had power problems, I had audio problems. People are still watching that video, of course. It's like, a, it's a good video. Um, but the quality is like not anywhere near where it is right now because I hadn't, you know, figured it all out yet. And bless all of you for being so, so, showing so much grace and sticking around as we figure it out. The important thing is that we're here. We'll work out the technical details. And I think that we have. So I'm very happy to hear that. I'm glad that it sounds good. So that's what's going on with day nine. We're talking about that quite a bit. The other thing we're talking about on day nine is, is it time for you to update or refine your Whole30 elevator pitch? So in the beginning of the program, I asked you, when people say to you, what's the Whole30, what are you going to tell them? What are you going to say? Do you have like a super quickie elevator pitch line? Oh, it's a 30-day self-experiment designed to help me figure out how foods work for me. There you go. That's just, write that down. That could be your elevator pitch. As we get further into the journey, you may want to refine it. You may want to talk about some of the benefits you've seen. 
you may want to talk about why you're doing this because the first time your coworker asked, you gave them the basic pitch, but now that you're nine or 10 days in, you've been eating lunch together every day, they seem genuinely curious about your experience and how it's going. You may want to share a little bit more with them. I'll be honest, I came into the Whole30 with some pretty serious joint pain and swelling and I was really having trouble sleeping and my hope was that the Whole30 would help me identify foods that may be contributing to those and now that we're on day nine, I'm sleeping so much better. So that's really encouraging for me and it definitely makes me even more committed to seeing it through. Think about what your Whole30 elevator pitch looks like. Would you want to expand on it? Would you want to add to it? What are some of the non-scale victories that you might feel comfortable sharing? if people ask. That can be a really helpful way, I think, to help you stay connected with people over your Whole30 and also feel confident in not only explaining what you're doing in a way that doesn't feel like you're oversharing, but what I'm really getting at is here, practicing your boundary conversations. It's always a good time to remind yourself, what am I going to say if someone pressures me to have the break room donut? What am I going to say if someone says to me, oh my God, it's been like two weeks already. You're still doing that whole 30 thing. What am I going to say when someone says, oh, come on, you can have one glass of wine. Like nobody's going to tell whole 30 on you. How will you respond to those conversations? So boundary conversations happen to be my specialty. There's an entire chapter in the book of boundaries in food, alcohol, and table talk where I model some of those and script some of those conversations out. But just think about Maybe conversations that you've had in the last nine days and whether or not any of them have felt uncomfortable, whether any of them caught you off guard, whether any of them felt, you know, made you feel anxious. And now that you've got a little more time, whole 30 time under your belt, and hopefully at least some aspects of the program feel easier, think about how you could prepare yourself for those conversations in a way that would help you feel less anxious, feel more confident, feel more comfortable. So that's another piece of what we're talking about in whole 30 day by day. Susan is saying that in past Whole30s, you've, which makes me feel like, Susan, you've probably skipped reintroduction or you've not done a thorough reintroduction or a proper reintroduction because without reintroduction, you won't really have the blueprint or the template to answer the is it worth it question in your food freedom. But it doesn't feel too early to say that this time is different. It doesn't. You walked into this Whole30 perhaps telling yourself this time is different. And if you didn't, you're at least saying it now because you're showing up here, you're committed, you are investing in yourself, you're investing in your whole 30. And this time absolutely is different. And I am going to have so much advice and tips and support and connection around reintroduction and around food freedom this year. Like if we are going to keep this YouTube live series going, I'll keep showing up in February. We'll keep talking about food freedom. I will go live on this channel, you know, whenever you need me to, to offer support, advice, and motivation. But what, what my promise is, is that we're not going to leave you hanging. We never left you hanging because we've got a lot of reintroduction materials. There's a whole book called Food Freedom Forever, but some people, it just, you know, they need more than a book. They need a connection. They need to be able to ask questions. They need to hear something out loud that makes them go, oh, wow, now I get it. You know, sometimes when you hear something for the fourth or fifth time, it's just the right time and it clicks or you hear it in a different way and it just clicks. One of the things I've learned from coaching people through the Whole30 for so long is that I have to learn how to say the same thing six or seven different ways because it's going to land differently for everyone. So if I want to get a point across, I need to figure out how to flex my communication style to share that point from a variety of perspectives and a variety of tones with a variety of different words or languages so that it lands with everybody equally, but in different ways. And that's what these lives are all about. They're about hearing what you need when you need it. They're about connecting with each other. They are about, you know, just reaffirming the fact that you are here. When you show up to these lives, this is your evidence that you are a healthy person with healthy habits. This is your evidence that you are whole 30. This is it because you're here. Because you made the conscientious decision to prioritize you for this hour, whether you're watching it live or watching it in the replay, and show up for yourself and your Whole30 journey. This is you showing up. And that automatically makes this round different. And I'm really happy for you, Susan. We got you. Don't worry. We'll get you, we've got you covered the whole way. You'd love to. Yeah, Melanie says, I'd love to continue through reintro and food freedom in February. Cool. Great. We already have plans to continue through reintroduction. We already have plans 
to offer some food freedom resources for sure. But I like these lives. They're really fun. They're really easy. People are definitely watching them in the replay. And I like that we're showing up talking about discrete topics. Like today is day nine and we're venturing off, but like nobody's going to come into day nine and we're going to cover a ton of reintroduction. We're going to save that towards the appropriate time in your Whole30 journey where you're ready to focus on reintroduction. Right now we're focusing primarily on the Whole30, but I like that they're that we've got kind of each day with a discrete topic and we will absolutely keep doing this through reintroduction and through uh, food freedom. Absolutely. We have a few other comments here. Jackie is saying a few things prepped and ready to go for the weekend. Look at you. It's, was it Tuesday? It's only Tuesday. You already got things prepped for the rest of the week and the weekend. Amen. I love hearing that. Fantastic. Homemade mayo, five minutes, five ingredients, five minutes way to go. And it's going to be absolutely delicious. And you're going to visit your son and his family for five days this weekend, bringing two meals for sharing, eggs for breakfast. All right, let's share some planning ideas for Laura. First of all, Laura, this is a great opportunity for you to have a conversation with your son and to say, hey, we're doing the whole 30. This is what it means, X, Y, and Z. Normally, when we visit you, we would go out for pizza or we'd order pizza in on Friday. This year, I'd rather do something else. Could we do ABC? Could we make our own taco bar for dinner one night? Could you, you know, could I browse the restaurants in your neighborhood? And like, could I make a pick that works for all of us? So have the conversation up front and set the expectation, especially if there is a particular family tradition that you won't be participating in. If every time you visit, you bring your homemade chocolate chip cookies and during the whole 30, it just feels too hard to bake them. You can say like, hey, they're not coming this time just to give you a heads up, but I can make my famous X, Y, Z, maybe it's your chicken wings, or maybe it's something else that happens to be Whole30 compatible. So have a plan going into it and set some expectations. Definitely bring some meals for sharing. That sounds great. When you get there, say, can we go to the grocery store? There are a couple staples that I would love to have while we're here. I'm going to pick up some nut pods. I'm going to pick up some chomp snack sticks. I want to pick up like one bottle of Primal Kitchen dressing. So we've got a salad dressing here that I know I can do go grocery shopping together. That's, I think, a really fantastic, first of all, it's like a nice bonding experience. Go to the store. That way you get to pick out exactly what you want and you don't have the stress of sending someone who doesn't know the Whole30 program rules to the store with like a list that may or may not feel stressful for them. And then you know you've got some great food in the house that you know you can eat or pick from or choose from. And then maybe bring a cookbook and flip through a Whole30 cookbook and say, what looks good? I can eat any, I can have anything in here. Everything in here is on, is, you know, on the table for me. What looks good to you? Or think about making meals that we've talked about this before. The core component is Whole30. And if they want to add their own sides, like rice or bread or rolls or tortilla chips, go for it, right? Maybe you make a Whole30 chili, the smoky sweet potato chili from the Whole30 cookbook, and you top it with your own homemade, um, your own homemade sour cream and they use dairy sour cream, or you top it with um, nutritional yeast, and they crumble some tortilla chips over it, or you serve it with a side of Whole30 ranch dressing, and you have your vegetable crudite, and they, you know, or salsa and guac, and they're using tortilla chips to scoop. So the main meal is Whole30, but you've got these components that are kind of mix and match, so everybody can have a piece of the meal that they enjoy. So many different strategies. The other thing you could do is look at Whole30 compatible or Whole30 approved restaurants or meal delivery companies in the area. Five days isn't that long. I think you're going to be like totally fine with being able to make your own food, but like, is there a Chipotle nearby? So that if he wants to like grab lunch out real quick, or you need to grab lunch out real quick, you can just order the Whole30 salad bowl, the wholesome bowl from Chipotle. So a little planning and prep here, I think goes a long way, but so does having a conversation with your son ahead of time to set some expectations, do a quick grocery shop when you get there, and then think about planning meals together that work for everybody. I doubt you're going to open a Whole30 cookbook and any person who enjoys food is going to look through it and go, none of this looks good. That's not going to happen. That's ridiculous. So maybe bring a book or have a couple recipes planned ahead of time that you know are family favorites. If your son loves wings or loves spaghetti and meatballs, you can make that. You got spaghetti squash. You've got Whole30 compatible meatballs. You need a Whole30 compatible meat sauce, or you can make your own. And you've got nutritional yeast. Easy peasy. And if they want to have garlic bread for themselves, absolutely no problem. So I think you have a ton of options here. And the fact that you are already thinking about it is why you're going to be so successful, Laura. I hope you have a really great 
a really great time. Uh, Emily is talking about the Whole30 group on Whoop. The link is right here in the chat. We do have a contingency of folks who are using their Whoop fitness and lifestyle trackers during their Whole30. So if you have a Whoop and you're doing the January Whole30, we are in the chat in the Whoop app talking about how's your sleep? How's your HRV? How's your resting heart rate? How's your respiratory rate? How's your recovery? Are you in the green? Are you in the yellow? I'll share more about that tomorrow on my story, but we would love for you to join us if you are a Whoop wearer. Matthew's saying you're on a social media break and you're glad to have these. I think that's, yeah, that's great. I think that's great. YouTube is far more of a resource for the Whole30. I think about Instagram. I think about TikTok. Those are definitely in educational, informational, entertaining, but these lives are a real resource because you get to ask questions, because you can get personalized advice, because we're here for an hour talking about nothing but Whole30 Day 9 for a whole hour. I think these can definitely go a long way towards replacing social media. So I'm really happy to hear it. Stephanie is saying the same thing. That makes that makes me happy too. Bobby's saying I chopped all my vegetables for tonight while making dinner last night. Autumn Michaelis has this like theory in the kitchen where you're sort of never doing like one thing at a time. She usually relates it to cooking where it's like if you've got one thing in the oven, you can be doing something else in the kitchen. I kind of follow the same philosophy, which is while something's cooking, I can prep something else. If I'm roasting a tray of vegetables, I might as well roast two and get them both done at the same time. If I'm chopping vegetables for tonight and I know I'm going to use similar vegetables to, for tomorrow, why don't I batch it and do it all at once? Because it's the same cutting board. It's the same knife. It's the same veggie. It's the same motion. So I'm kind, I'm like a geek for operational efficiency in my pre whole 30 job. I worked for an insurance company. This was like in 2000, I worked for an insurance company doing operations um, assistance. I managed a team of operations assistants and business analysts. So my job there was to like take things that weren't very well organized and make them incredibly well organized and efficient. And I still like to apply some of those principles to basically my everyday life here. So I like to be efficient in the kitchen. I clean as I go. If I have something simmering on the stove, I can take 10 seconds before I stir it and clean something up. So I absolutely make use. If I'm in the kitchen, I'm never standing around. I'm always doing something, whether it's cleaning up after myself, prepping for something else, you know, chopping extras, putting dishes away, whatever. I maximize my time in the kitchen, usually with like a podcast on or um, a really fun, you know, music, piece of music on. Lately, it's been Taylor Swift all day, all night. Laura is saying food does feel all consuming. I know you're going to turn the corner, Laura, and it's going to feel great. It's going to feel a whole lot easier any day soon. Yes, Kathleen, we're going to cover you through reintroduction. Don't you worry about it. We've got some great links here. This is Autumn's philosophy, make something extra. That's her philosophy that I have then extended into do something extra. Don't ever just stand around in the kitchen, do something else. And I, I find puttering in the kitchen a really like that feels very active to me. We're all talking about adding more activity into our day. And when we think about it, we're like, oh, it's another exercise session or I go for another walk. But like, no, can you just be doing things? Can I stand at my desk instead of sit? Can I putter in the kitchen by doing some meal prep or cleaning or organizing or breaking down cardboard boxes? For me, that counts towards activity, definitely counts according to my woo. And I think that can make the most of your kitchen time as well. So I think that's great. Michelle is saying I'm always multitasking. Day off work, meal prepping, watching turkey meatballs, butternut squash soup. I love that. Oh, that sounds like such a good hearty meal. I'll share on Instagram what we made for lunch today, but it came, it was from Whole30 Recipes. I can't remember who submitted it. I've had it bookmarked for a while, but it's like a loaded baked potato soup that we're going to add chicken to, and it's going to be delicious. It feels like a soup day. It feels like just right for a soup day. So I love it. Do we have any kind of last minute like questions or requests before we sign off. We've gone through Whole30 Day 9. Let me look at what my homework for Whole30 Day 9 was today. Well, the homework was expanding your elevator speech. So a couple personal reasons you've started the Whole30, benefits you've already seen. And I'm going to add to that. Think about any boundary conversations that you might need to have and practice those as well. Kathleen is saying, are these links available after the chat? Yes. So I have settings in YouTube set up such that once this posts to YouTube, generally takes like maybe an hour or two, but you will see the chat and all of the links that we have shared show up below the video. 
If you're on mobile, you might need to click on the little chat button to expand it and show it. And if you're on desktop, it will show up underneath, but you can see all these comments, all of these links, watch every aspect of the replay. Yes, that's one of the beauties of using this software in with the YouTube live function. So that seems like a good place to end. Thanks so much for joining me today, day nine of the January Whole30. I'll be back tomorrow. Same time, same place, probably a different lipstick because we're really playing around with that right now and I'm very much enjoying it. So let me know if you have any questions. Uh, you can always find me on Instagram at Melissa U. Make sure you subscribe before you leave. Please click that little thumbs up button. If you like haven't done that yet, please do that for me. That helps other people find the video who are interested in Whole30. Share it. Share it in your story. Share the link, you know, in your social media group, in your Facebook group. If you think anybody would benefit from these lives, invite them on in. I love sitting with you and chatting with you every single day. And I am excited. And if there were any questions that I missed, I will hit them as soon as this posts to the YouTube channel. So come on back. Thank you so much for joining. I hope everyone has a good rest of your day nine and I will see you right back here tomorrow. Thanks everyone. Take care.